So tonight, I am going to be going over the Katana Librarian. It's one of a couple different apps, mobile apps that you can use for your boss Katana, Mark II. But there's another one called Katana Man. That's a free one. Very limited in its capabilities. And then you got Katana Man Pro, which is the pro version of Katana Man, and it has more stuff. I did notice when I loaded the free version of Katana Man that it was vertical and not horizontal. That makes a big difference to you. I don't know. It makes a big difference to me because I like to use my tablet like this. And if you have a tablet, I think it's better. You can do it from a phone, but it's just a little smaller. So let me show you what you're going to need. You're going to need an OTG cable, one that'll plug, that you can plug your uh, A end of your USB into it and then plug the other side into your phone. This one's for USB-C. This is for micro USB. That's what I'm using. And then you do have ones for Apple. And it wasn't until, I think, in the last year or so that uh, this app was supported. It wasn't supported on iPhones before, but now it is, so that's cool. Now, if you have a newer phone, you might have something like this over here. It came with it. I know my Samsung and I think my Pixel did, where it's for, like, transferring, uh, for transferring files. So you, if you have one of those, you can use that, too. So let's, uh, so yeah, you can see they're not very expensive on here. So let's fire up the screen share thing here. This is Katana Librarian. Now, if you want to go to the Play Store, and it's probably going to come up in my searches right here. And there you go. That's Katana Librarian. It costs about nine bucks, and it's worth it. You first download it. It may just, it's for just like evaluation just to make sure you can connect. And then you'll have to buy the paid version in order to use all of its capabilities. There's Katana Man and Katana Man Pro. And these other ones, BTS for Katana and BTS for Katana Air, those are amp specific. So you got to be careful. Yeah, I said got to. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get out of here and go back. So this is where Katana Librarian starts. Now, you plug your amp into it, and it'll automatically pop up here to your library. This is where all your patches are going to be stored. It doesn't store them as live sets. It stores them as patches. But you can do groups as well. This is the editor, and this is your virtual GAFC. It just looks like a couple stacked GAFCs, but it's got all eight of your channels here. You can turn your panel loop, tap, global EQ, on and off, and your effects across the bottom. So let's go back over. You can just swipe back over to the library, and these three lines up in the top left, those go to your settings. Now, these are your groups. You can open groups. You want to load these patches? Yeah, sure, why not? So you can load those patches individually, select them, Go over to the editor and edit them. But let's just go back over to uh, let's go back over to the library. So you click on after you got groups open. If you want to go back, you go back up top here. Just click on library up top left, and you're back in your library. So in order to load or edit a patch, if you simply want to load it to your amp, the three little dots over on the right. You click that, and it gives you the option. All right. If you want to add it to a group, you can add it to a group. If you want to share, rename, delete, so on and so forth. But if you just click on it, it's going to load it. Sometimes it'll ask if you want to load it. So once you load it, and it's up here in this spot right here, it's in the editor. Let's swipe back over to the editor, and here we are. This is where the magic happens. But let me show you one more thing before we get too deep. Let's look at the settings. And down all the way at the bottom here, settings. So this is where you got all sorts of different settings. Your amplifier. This is where you can change your settings like you would in the settings portion of Bosca Tone, uh, uh, Tone Studio. So if you click on that, and here you go. Preset. I don't have any presets but I could, if I wanted to, I could save everything as a preset. 
So right now, this is what I have in my presets. The mic, one, line out for recording. If I wanted to change it, I can change that. But all that other stuff is turned off right now. But if I go back down here, it's back on. So you got your power amp in settings, your global EQ. It's in, it's disabled right now, but if I enable it, if we go back to the virtual GAFC, you'll see that green button on. But I don't want it on right now. And then it'll show your parametric. You, it'll show your different things. I don't have anything set up in my other two. I mean, I guess I do, but I don't. I don't really have them set up. They're just kind of there. But you can set your global EQs and all your other stuff. Now let's go back over here. Patch import maximum volume. Let's say you're the kind of person that uh, does that wackiness where you crank your master all the way up and you use your amp volume for the actual volume instead of master like master is supposed to be. And let's say you got your master maxed and you download a patch for me and I got that thing maxed out at like 85. And all of a sudden you select that patch and boom, loud AF. You don't want that. So you can select that and let's say you just want to maximum volume level 10. It's not a bad idea. I'm going to put it back at 100 because I use my master volume like it should be used in my opinion. Now here's your other optional settings. You can confirm patch overwrite, hide demo patches. Yes, it does come with demo patches, but you can select them on or off of your library. You keep the screen on while you're playing. Show the navigation button, slider, display type, slider only, or slider with at values and up and down buttons. So you can just have the slider, or you can have the slider with the values of you know one or zero to a hundred, or with the up and down buttons, or slider with values and up and down buttons. I think that's the best one. Allow clicks on the sliders. Disable to prevent accidental clips from altering slide values. And allow drag and dropping in the menus and virtual GAFC type. Let's take a look at that one real quick. So you got normal and you got compact. Let's go over here. Let's go over to virtual GAFC. This is normal. Let's look at compact real quick. So we're going to go there and select compact. And we go back. And that's boring. So that's why I like I like I hope you can see where I'm touching. I hope that little dot's big enough where you can see it. If you're watching this on a phone, it might be kind of hard. That's what she said. The number of groups shown in a menu, you can show all the groups, you can show none of the groups. So let's let's show none of the groups. So when I go back in a second, you shouldn't see any groups in there. And you got hotkey and remote control. You got hotkey and MIDI settings. You can set these up to use a Bluetooth or a MIDI foot controller. I, I said Bluetooth, but I'm not sure about that. And then you got some other links down here if you want to join a Facebook groups or Jukaneer Guitar or all that good stuff. And then you got your, your, your version of Katana Librarian right here. So let's go back over here. And let's, oh, look at that. My groups are uh, non-existent now. So let's go back over to library. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, load a patch into your library. So you come up here to these little three lines right by the word library where it says open navigator drawer. Press that and you go down to import TSL. So this is where it's important that you know where your patches are loaded to or where you downloaded them from. If you downloaded them from a Facebook group onto your tablet or if you loaded them onto a... Uh, flash memory card or micro SD card into your tablet so here we go I'm gonna try to see if I can load one that's I don't have already in there let's go this tornado of souls one right here so I find the patch I double click it it says confirm import you hit yes and then let's see if it's called tornadoes and there it is right there so it's as easy as that and then you can click on it and then load it into if you need it. And that's the gist of just loading a patch into your library from the internet that you downloaded onto your tablet. We talked about loading a patch up into here for editing.
So let's edit it real quick. We're just going to do a... Take that back. We're going to explore the editor. So up here, amplifier. In the amplifiers, you have more amplifiers than you did before. You have all the regular ones up to brown variation, and you've got these other ones. That's because Boss pretty much recycled some software, but there's very limited what you can actually see that's in the amp. So all these amps are called sneaky amps. They're already there, but you can't access them from Boss Tone Studio. I'm hoping one day they give us a little freedom, and they let us, one way or another. Yeah, that'd be cool, because... I like these, especially these ones down here, these R Fire Vintage and Modern. Those are like Mesa boogies. I'll leave a link down in the description of what these other sneaky amps are supposed to emulate. So back up here, after brown variation, you got cleans, you got more crunches, power drives, metal, uh, like a clean twin fender, pro crunch, so on and so forth. You got a bunch of different uh, amps you can choose from to edit and... I don't know if you remember or if you didn't even see it or not, but the Pantera patch, that one was using one of these Mesa Boogie patches, and that's why I couldn't quite emulate it from Boss Tone Studio. So let's get out of that. But on this right side here, this is where you make all your changes, just like the panel, you know, your EQs, your volume gain, presence, and you got a little bright button here, just like some other amps have. By a touch of a button, it'll make it brighter. And you, did you see, as soon as I did that, that right there went there. And that's indicating that there has been a change. And that's where you're going to save it from. But before we do that, let's look a little more. Over here, you got your FX. Nothing different than what is on Boss Tone Studio. It's all the same. If you click there, you still have all the same settings that you can adjust. Nothing is different. If you go down... You got your cabinet resonance, same as uh, Tone Studio. Pretty much everything from here on out except chain is the same as Boss Tone Studio. So you got your solo and your contour. Now chain, this is a good one now. If you click that, you see you got all your regular chains that are already there. But, but, if you look over at the chain and you see that right there, Drag items to reorder. You can fully customize this and make it any way you want. If you want to put your noise gate all the way up front, you can do that. If you want to move your EQ up, you can do that. You can change this FX chain however way you want. And I'm not going to save it. In fact, I'm going to have to go back here in just a second, and I'll just edit that out of the video. Then you, down here, you got your uh, pedal effects. You turn that on and off and choose what pedal effects you want. Nothing different there. Parametric EQ, regular EQ, noise gate, send and return. And then all your foot pedal assignment, different types, your knob settings, foot switch, so on and so forth. It's not totally different except those two major things, amp and your effects chain. So now... That 80s patch is in there. Look, it, it is loaded and ready to be saved, but I don't want to save it. So if there's one that's been changed and you go to load another one, it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to load this patch? The other one hasn't been saved. I do. So I'm going to hit yes. Now, that one's loaded to the editor. It is not loaded anywhere here on the GAFC or your amp. Okay, it's not there yet. Now, if we go back over to editor, and let's say we, we're just going to watch. As soon as I hit this minus button, up here, you're going to see that little thing that indicates that it's been changed. Ready? Bam. So now it's been changed. Do we want to save it? Let's click that to save it. That's, that's your right button. Not your right button. That's your save button. So we're going to save that patch as hardwire. We're going to hit OK. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite. Do I want to overwrite? Yes, I do. So it's going to overwrite. And now it's been edited and saved. Not to your GAFC. It's been edited and saved to the library. If you want to load it to your amp, you got to come back over here and click those three little dots right there. 
and choose write to AMP. I'm not going to save it, but you have to choose which one you want to save it to. And we're going to we're going to save it on the panel here. It's not going to save. I mean, it'll save, but as soon as I like change the AMP or turn it off and on, it's going to it's going to overwrite to the same old defaults. So that's it, pretty much. Now you can see panel down here. It says hardwire. I could have saved that to any of these other eight channels, but I saved it to the panel because as soon as I turn that uh, amp off and plug it back in, it's going to reset to just a plain old panel. It's not going to say hardwire anymore. It shouldn't. But like I said, here is where you can choose which channels you want to use. If you don't have a foot pedal, this is a great thing because it's your virtual GAFC. I showed you the editor. It's fairly simple to go through and edit things. You can use these sliders to go up and down any way you want. Turn right on, off and on, so on and so forth. I mean, I'm beating a dead horse here. It's not rocket science, and it's fairly easy to navigate, especially if you have a tablet, especially if you have a big tablet. Your library, we went over that. We went over your settings. I think we're uh, pretty much wrapped up. So that's going to wrap it up. I hope it has been informative. I hope you think it's maybe now worth the 9 bucks to spend on it. I think it is, especially if you want to adjust it from anywhere else. If you take it to a friend's house or you're jamming or whatever and you want to make some adjustments or load some other patches that you didn't already have loaded on it or change amps, it's there. It's available. It's 9 bucks. What else do you spend 9 bucks on? You spend 9 bucks on a 12-pack of crappy beer, and it's gone in a day. You spend 9 bucks on this amp, and it's there forever. Maybe, kind of, sort of. I mean, it'll stay with your Apple or your Google account, but nothing is forever. That's going to wrap it up. We'll see you next time.